All right, here we go. We got the Wii 2 breakdown. Can't count the two. Already losing my mind. Uh, but yeah, let's just hop right into it. We'll start off with uh, my game versus E. Uh, I I got smoked. There's no there's no way uh, getting around that one. I got I got smoked. But I was trying to bring this cool Manaphy, so we'll show that off real quick here. I had this Manaphy running Grip Claw, so my Whirlpool would last seven turns. And unfortunately, was not able to trap the Suicune there. But that's all right. Uh, got to at least, you know, connect with it. I think I made contact twice with it. Uh, but we'll go up here to turn 10 real fast. Currently, I'm debating a Roost uh, because I could use this defensively. Or I could just go into Ogre Pond. It's like a Terra Blast Ground or Moon Blast or whatever he would realistically do in his Zapdos here. Wouldn't do a lot of damage. And E makes a beautiful read and goes for the Hurricane. Outstanding play. Just beautiful. Uh, I, I, no notes. 10 out of 10. Loved it. Uh, let's go over here to the beginning of the end. I got an Encore Tinkaton. Haven't showed off Encore yet. And in the back of my mind, I was like, if this thing sets up, that's going to be a problem. Maybe I just click it now and, you know, I, I would suck to lose a good Monkey Dory switch in. Um, but I think, like, offensively, I could end up, like, dealing with it. Uh, turns out, I wimped out and did not go for the Encore. And, uh, yeah, so you can see here, this is uh, game over. Except the Endure Inteleon against all odds. Eating the Landsat Berry to get the critical hit boost. And I don't crit. It wasn't going to kill anyway, as you can see from that damage, even with Sniper. Uh, but yeah, that was me and E's game summed up. Uh, Urshifu went burr. But yeah, let's go into the next one here. We got Nathan and Demo. All right. So, a couple things I want to highlight here. We got the Toxic Lie Score into Annihilate. Good. You're not, you know, proccing any Rage Fist boosts or whatever. It's still 50 base power because you haven't attacked yet. See, it's barely doing anything. But wait, what happened at the end of turn one? We don't see an item on Gliscor. Turns out it's just leftovers, which was intentional because of Magic Bounce Hatterene potentially coming in and bouncing a Toxic back. You get the lefties and the Poison Heal together. Obviously really, really, really risky, but if that was to actually come out in this game, that would have been insane. Um... But yeah, let's just go over here. Uh, Gliscor is going to end up 1v1-ing the Annihilate. And just take a note of everything on Nathan's end. The fat things are weak. 28% Gliscor, 51% Heatran. All right, Champ Pals in. Iron Hands. Iron Hands takes a ton from an Overheat, and now is at 38%. So we got a full health Aloe, which is you know physically defensive. And then like anything with any semblance of special defense is pretty much chipped down and it is turn 11 and Deoxys does 46 to Alamomola sets up a substitute on the mirror coat just in case Mola lived and that is all she wrote just a, a perfectly curated Deoxys set this week um Really, really hard to play around a um, mon that can do so many different things and is that fast, obviously. Uh, but yeah, shout out Demo for really cool set um, and kind of playing that early game, which felt a little weird because he was losing a lot of pieces early, but he got the chip he needed for Deoxys in the end game. So yeah, well done. All right, we got Joe and Ton here. So just a couple turns I wanted to highlight. This this game was uh, all about pivoting and switching and in and out U turns, yada yada. Pretty tough to watch, low-key, but it was well played. Uh, turn 13, we got the Burnt Ribombi. Iron Treads comes in to spin away the webs and gets Switcherood. And Rib Ribombi takes the leftovers. And now that's important because Ribombi can come back in on these rocks when Ogre Pond sets up the substitute. And because it took the rocks damage and has the burn, it's still able to live because of the leftovers, keeping it um, at 3% there. Now, uh, this is a turn I want to talk about because this Ogre Pond behind a Substitute, this is carrying a ton of weight, right? This is this is a threat, essentially, into Joe's team at this point. Um, so, 
like my my analysis is like Tan should recognize that this is a threat. This Raibambi is going to attack me. You know, you haven't seen the fourth move yet, so it's pretty safe to assume it's either you know Bug Buzz or Moon Blast or whatever. Going for sub against a, something that could be running <laughs> Bug Buzz is another issue. But what Tan does here is the Moon Blast goes down, but he sets up a Sword Stance. Now that's that's a little problematic because sure maybe you can live another moon blast but then you're going to be at like two percent or something um just felt like a good time to get rid of ribombi webs are not up you could have eliminated that threat and kind of like taken a little bit of stress off of treads because it doesn't have its lefties anymore it doesn't want to always just come in and remove hazards so uh that's something i would have changed right there i probably would have just got gone for the attack got rid of it and now everything on your team you know barring like Sneasler, which hasn't came out yet, uh, is potentially faster than everything on Joe's team. Uh, let's see here. What other turn? Okay. So 25. Yep. We got Rybombi sets up webs, goes down to Firefang. Now this next turn, Quack comes in here on a fairy type, you know, being a fighting type, goes for the Aqua Step, starts to set up and Tan misses the play rough. However, I don't know how impactful that is because we can see Tan go for the wish right here. Like, maybe if it was going to be a two-hit KO onto Quaquavel, uh, Dox one goes for another play rough into the Corviknight and then potentially can kill it with Fire Fang the following turn because we will see here it's faster and just 14%. Okay, well, I take I retract my previous statement. Play rough is not doing fifteen percent to this, so I guess I guess nothing really changes there anyway. And you get that wish back on you. Uh, here we go. Uh, Quaquavel just went for the CC on a Claude Sire switch in, and is packing Ice Spinner to be able to pick that up. That's really good uh, coverage this week into Tan's team. You know. It, the Brave Bird would be really good for Ogre Pond, but the Ice Spinner to get rid of the, um, the Cloud Sire obviously worked out really well. And turn 35, Del Fox is still holding that Gucci Scarf. It's not letting go of it. I don't think it's going to let go of it for the rest of the season, honestly. And then finally, we got the Sneasler here. Boom. Did you guys see that at the bottom? We got the Normal Gem Fake Out. So Unburden is active. And Sneasler is just going to clean up. So, yeah, pretty pretty nice heat right there out of Joe's end. Uh, but that was a really good game. Like like I said, I didn't go over the first couple turns because it was all positioning and kind of just feeling each other out like um, early rounds of a boxing match. All right, Berg and Dodge. Here we go. We got an, an Amorous that is very set up into a Gudra. So... Ice Beam did 57% here at already a plus two, plus two, an Amorous. Uh, or it's plus two speed, plus two special attack. So it doesn't have any, it's not like it was, you know, boosting up like too crazy or anything. Uh, the acid sprays were kind of keeping it at bay. However, Berg in this really good position decided not to Terra <laughs> with Gudra and took a plus two Moonblast to the dome. Yeah. Yeah, you're going to want that one back, that's for sure. Uh, turn 13 here. So Lando is going to pick up this kill on Zarud, and then Veluza comes in. Veluza, I was talking to Dodge about this. The Scarf Veluza, in my mind, would you know trigger some flags if I'm coming in on a Lando after I got a kill. Be like, oh, this thing's normally slower than me. I, I need to switch out. But I guess that's the nature of Veluza being such a setup dependent mon that you kind of just have to stay in because if you switch out, give it a free fillet away, you know, you could be in trouble, especially with this being a Terra Captain, um, which actually allows Dodge here to get the Scarf Aqua Cutter kill. So that actually was like a really good tech that I didn't even envision until the game happened. And I was like, oh, you know what? I probably also would not have switched out because, you know, like, what am I going to do once this thing's got essentially a shell smash up? Like, I'm screwed. Um, let's go over here. Cinderace comes in, misses the Will-O-Wisp on the Cabalion. No matter. This is a Scorching Sands Cinderace. 
with Libero, so it turns into the ground type and is immune to the Thunder Wave. Really, really cool tech. I get it because of like Cavalion's physical defense, plus like Berg has Skeledurge, so it'd be nice to actually have something to hit Skeledurge with Cinderace. Obviously not its best set most weeks, but really cool that it actually worked out pretty well this week. Um, something I did want to talk about with Berg, though, is this is a special Palafin. The Berg special, right? Specs with like Surf, Boom Burst, Flip Turn, and some other... I think it's Ice Beam as the other coverage move. Uh, Palafin is, doesn't care about being burnt, right? It's not like you're clicking Flip Turn for damage. You're a special attacker. You can always, you know, whatever. Cinderace can't really do anything to Palafin, right? Like, especially after it burns its Libero and it is already the ground type. You know, after this turn... If I'm Berg and I, I lose my Cabalion here, I'm going into Palafin a million percent of the time, especially since Grassy Terrain just went away. You know, that Trailblaze is not going to do anything to you. And this is just like the freest surf I've ever seen, right? Veluz is not really taking it. Petron's going to die at 42 and Blood Moon's going to get O-Code. So that's my note for Berg right there. I think if you just go Palafin, you could have kind of sped this game up a little bit. Um, because it started getting a little bit crazy, especially here, where Berg now decides with a parting shot that, oh yeah, I'm going to go Palafin now and just eat this Blood Moon to the face. And now potentially could be in danger of like a physically offensive Trailblaze or something, right? Uh, obviously that's not the set it is and it worked out fine, but definitely not the time I would I would have just went into Rillaboom on, on Blood Moon and just kept it rolling, but... All good. And finally, the last turn of the game. Cinderace goes for the U-turn to turn into the bug type a couple turns ago. That way it can deal with Rillaboom. This last turn, turn 35, if this is a crit on U-turn, Berg loses. <laughs> uh, so yeah, came, came really down to the wire. Um, but yeah, well done. Uh, GG's. Let's go on to the next one. Don and Ty. Not a ton to talk about here. So we're just going to get this uh, Mesprit hitting the quick little U-turn into Ting Lu. And Alolan Executor does not leave the field for the rest of the game. Moltres comes in, makes sense. It's especially defensive. Can handle it. All right, we got some Calm Minds. Terra Fairy now. That crit's actually kind of crazy because it put it into Citrus Berry range. And this Aggie just had a knack for harvesting that Citrus Berry. And so I I understand keeping Moltres in. You, you can't switch in if it attacks. But uh, especially at this point, you just got to go Ting Lu and Whirlwind. You just got to get rid of it and then cut your losses with a Ting Lu that takes like a million percent. At at this percentage, you know, if you're calcing it, the Dragon Pulse into your Moltres, you know that you can live like a, a Giga Drain or something. Sure, if it's Leaf Storm, that's a problem, but you might be able to outplay afterwards with um, some other stuff because it's not all the way boosted with all that special attack. Um, but yeah, it's Giga Drain. Look at all that health coming back. And Aggy doesn't leave the field. So yeah, great prep on Don's end, that's for sure. Really, really good prep. All right, let's go over to Graham and Cordell. And ladies and gentlemen, may I present to you the heat of the week. Quiver Dance Volk into Mirror Herb Gouging Fire. Let's go. That's awesome. Yeah, so we got a crazy boosted uh, Gouging Fire here. However, Gastrodon is packing the Clear Smog. So, takes a good chunk, clear smogs it up, and then Gastron's at 41%. It most likely is living the next Dragon Claw now, right? Because it's not boosted. Um, yeah, I guess there, there probably is like a roll or two. But, I mean, looking at everybody else I have... Right, I'm probably going to want to just try to recover with Gastrodon and keep this thing from setting up. Right, I want my clear Smogmon in front of it. Uh, Graham gets aggressive and goes into Iron Valiant, which actually works out because Scalging Fire goes for the DD. Like, okay, all right, cool. Graham goes for the Aura Sphere though, 
on this next turn, which given the damage, I don't think Moonblast kills. You know, Moonblast is probably bringing it down to like 7% or something. Maybe, I know it's resisted, but maybe it's like bullet punch range. I don't even know if Graham's running that, whatever. I'm going for Moonblast there nine times out of 10. I, you just got to get as much damage as you can on it at this point. But this is a boosted gouging fire and Graham goes into his scarf nine tails, which is like, perfect. Hey, I'm scarfed. I'm going to be faster. We're, we're chilling. However, this is Scarf Ninetales with max HP and max special attack, so it's faster than non-boosted Mons. So Ninetales comes in, and I guess this was an oversight. Graham didn't even consider that he wasn't going to be faster than Gouging Fire and just sacked it right there, dead and gone. That's huge because if Ninetales is around in the end game, I'm pretty sure Graham has a chance to win this. But... Finally, the Reggie Rock comes in. Could have just done this off the rip. Oh, sorry. Let me show it. EQ does 61. No problem. I'm going to go boom in your face. <laughs> the boots explosion. All right. All good. Volcarona comes in. Kills the Darkrai. And then uh, some cheeky little plays here. The Gastron switch on the Aqua Jet. Perfect. And now you can Terra. Play the rough obviously missed, but it wasn't going to kill. Um, so you get some good chunk there. Maybe since he went for the Earth Power instead of a Recover right there, you know, Azu could have killed with another play rough on the next turn. Um, so yeah, that definitely changed it a little bit, I guess. But we get the Recover, but the combination of everything that Cordell has left, especially Terra Ground, Reva Doom, is enough to take it out. So yeah, GG's. That was a really good game. All right, let's go on to our game of the week. Dun dun. It's time. All right, Ogre Pond, Vikavolt lead. Ogre Pond gets out. I'm pretty sure max speed Ogre Pond is always going to be faster than a Vikavolt. Yeah, because this can hit 306. Um, or 305 or something like that with a rounding, whatever. Uh, so yeah, this is always getting out. It's Scarf Ogre Pond anyway, so no worries. However... Instead of going into, like, Glow King or Sand Slash, which was AV, so I, that's why I mentioned it. Goes into Infernape there to resist, like, the Bug-type moves and gets T-waved. That's pretty huge, because Infernape was faster than everything on MJC side of the field and could have been a problem in the end game. Yep, Glow King, easy switch on Rotom. Kirim also would have worked there, because rocks aren't up. All right, we get the chili reception, and then we get some fun stuff. Okay, freeze dry. Bang. And here's the turn. Freeze dry. Freeze! Let's go! <laughs> it wouldn't be MJC in the NCPL if there wasn't some sort of hacks. All right, Fortress comes in. Not too worried about what's going on. Just puts the rocks up. Good play. Rotom can always pivot on this. You know, especially if there's a potential for a para. All right, we got Ogre Pond in now. Probably once again, assuming he's switching out. Get some momentum. Yep, easy Infernape. Over predict predicts a little bit, right? Is trying to catch the Rotom coming in. And... Puts MJC at 20% here. T-Spike goes up. And he gets the Custap Explosion off. Let's go! <laughs> oh, we're so back. Now, this turn was pretty big. Um, Glow King, I do agree, is probably the best bet, right? Like, Rotom's probably coming out. But MJC makes a really good play and goes into Chiyu, and now everything on Tommy's side is extremely pressured by it, especially without Infernape now. The crit does suck, obviously. Um, it would have been a two-hit KO regardless. I don't know if Tommy's going to you know, adjust fire, seeing that this is Life Orb Chiyu, and maybe tries to preserve Rotom. Rotom's not doing a ton, I guess, at that lower percent, especially with Rocks up. Um... But we get to see the superpower tech here. Scarf superpower. Scarf was unnecessary because um, obviously webs weren't up and then, you know, Chiyu wasn't Scarf either. But uh, yeah, yeah, it worked out. Let's see here. 
MJC makes a beautiful play. Knockoff is 100% the move. Um, I mean, very easily could have just Brave Birded and been fine. Because, like, realistically, Rotom's always coming in on Sand Slash if that comes in. Um, could have also U turned. Uh, but, I mean, you want your Gapdos to knock off the, the Glow King at this point, right? Glow King's handling Golden Go and Rotom. That's why this turn's so huge, because now Tommy has no answer for Golden Go, realistically. Ogre Pond doesn't have knockoff this week. Um, Kiram is going to have to take rocks, which this is the turn I probably disagreed with the most on Tommy's end. Um, I don't have any real issues with whatever was happening because MJC was bringing a team that you just couldn't really predict. However, Glow King's not doing anything, right? Like, you just got your Icy Rock knocked off. Just sack it at this point and let Sand Slash come in and Terra, and then potentially get a spin-off or an EQ or whatever, right? Like, you have a, a ton of options, it, and especially if you can get the rocks off, Kirim can actually do a little something, because it's AV. At that percent, if it doesn't take rocks, it's probably going to be able to live a Specs um, Golden Go. Uh, but rocks are up for good, because MJC is running the double life orb offensive core, like a madman. But Ogre Pond's in here. Misses the play rough. Wow. Hindsight, that is so huge. Oh my gosh. If Tommy hits that, he actually wins. And we will see why. Yeah. Once again, Slokin comes in. It wasn't going to be able to do anything because obviously this is Hex, but even a Shadow Ball is killing at that range. Kieran comes in, is at 49%. Thankfully, is fast enough to get some good chip off. I'm surprised... Oh, no, it was, it was Choice Specs. That's right. He couldn't go for the Make It Rain there. And, yeah, Tommy makes a good play going for the Draco. Uh, still doesn't really have a play, though. Like, even if he went for, like, a Freeze Dry on that turn predicting the switch, right, it's not like you're preserving Kyurem, um at that point anyway. So, yeah, totally fine going for the Draco there. Gets the kill. Ogre Pond comes in, and it's Scarf Play Rough. And holy crap... We're going to see here, Play Rough does 16%, and MJC ends on 5. I'm so sorry, Tommy. That's 90% of the time you win that game. That is so tough. Wow. But credit to MJC. He brought Cancer, and it worked. So yeah, GG's. Uh, that is the week. Um, let me let me pull this up real quick. I got the standings over here. Let's see if I can do that. There we go. All right. As we all predicted, Joe and Cordell, top of the league, 2-0, plus 8 differential. And then we got Berg and MJC over there with a uh, plus 3 differential, also a 2-0. And, and uh, here's our Legion of Mid. I'm going to count myself in it because I think 2 is close enough to 0. Yeah. It's it's a it's a tough start for your boy, but it's all right. We're coming back. We got uh we got MJC next week, so that's gonna be a fun one. Check that game out once I put that up. But thanks for watching, everybody, and I'll catch everybody in the Discord. Peace.